Welcome to Angling AI's how-to video on our beginner's bait making kit. Our kit is intended to add some excitement to your fishing trip. In this video, we'll demonstrate how to properly use the kit, follow proper safety procedures, and get the most fun out of your kit. So let's get started by unpacking your kit and going over those safety protocols. For this video, we'll be using the beginner's bait making kit with a 5-inch jerkbait. Upon unpacking your kit, you should see two stickers, one from Dead On Plastics and one from Angling AI that you can use to decorate any area you choose. An aluminum CNC bait mold, a temperature probe to measure the temperature of your plastic to make sure you get it to the proper heat conversion of 350 degrees and so you can get the temperature of your plastic before you pour. A measuring cup for you to put your plastics all in so you can heat it in the microwave. There'll be three bottles of colored plastics all. There'll be no need to color these as they've been pre-colored already to make the process a little more smooth. In the jerk bait, we have chartreuse, snowshine, and melons. In today's video, we'll be using the colored plastisol melons. It's a great watermelon color. There's also a few more items that we recommend that are not included in your kit. The heat resistant gloves, safety goggles, something to stir your plastisol with so you can get a nice even heat. You may use a butter knife or a probe thermometer to have this accomplished. We recommend heating your mold while your plastisol is heating up. We use a griddle. If a griddle is not accessible, you can use a heat gun or a toaster oven. Heating your mold will help you make a better bait. In order to have the best experience while you're making your baits, we need you to follow some other safety protocols. We recommend wearing long sleeves, long pants, and toe covering shoes, since working with plastisol is extremely hot and can cause severe burns. Wearing this type of clothing will help keep you safe. We also recommend not heating plastics off in anything that you're going to use for food consumption. Get a separate 700 watt microwave and perform this activity in a garage or shop or somewhere other than a kitchen. Following all of these proper safety protocols will help you stay safe and enjoy your kit. Now that we've unpacked our kit and gone over all safety protocols, we're ready to start making our baits and using our kit. We want to make sure that we shake our plastics all really well. We want to get all the resins and the colorants mixed together. We recommend shaking our plastics all for one minute. Make sure that it gets a good shake and everything blends well. Now that we've shook our plastics all well and made sure that it's all mixed together, we're going to use our microwave safe cup to pour out the proper amount we want. For this demonstration, I'll pour out two ounces. This should be sufficient when we go to pour our bait. We could make several. Plastisol is reheatable, so after this is heated, you no longer have to get it to 350 degrees. You just got to get it returned to its liquid state. After pouring our plastics off, we'll see that it has a pretty milky consistency. As it heats, it will become watery and a little more transparent. Make sure that you're wearing your gloves and your safety goggles as you begin this process. We want to heat our plastics off for one minute, and then after that, in intervals of every 30 seconds. Our plastics all is almost heated for its one minute. We want to take our probe thermometer, open up the probe, look on the back, and turn it on. Temperature will show, and we're ready to begin. We'll put on our gloves, and take our plastics all out of the microwave. The plastics all are starting to convert and look a little less milky. We have to get to 350 degrees, and we're making sure that we scrape the bottoms and the sides as we stir our plastics off, trying to create a nice even heat. We still have a ways to go, but we'll do 30 second intervals to prevent overheating. We do not want to heat our plastics all over 380 to 400 degrees Fahrenheit.
I'll swirl it around to help dispense a little bit of heat, trying not to create too many bubbles. Use your probe thermometer every time to check the temperature of your plastisol to know how far you have to go or have you, have have you finished the heating process. Thing is going to need one more time. We're up to 287 now. Please remember to factor in the temperature of the room you're working in as you heat your plastisol. It will cool rather quickly to a state where you do not want to pour. Now our plastisol should be mostly converted, not completed. We'll use our temperature probe to verify. Stir it around to make sure you distribute the heat in the plastisol. And then hold the probe off the bottom of the cup somewhere in the middle to kind of verify our heat set. We've reached 357 degrees. We can actually go ahead and begin trying to pour our bait. We've been heating our mold on a griddle. We're ready to pour. Our mold has been heating on the griddle while we've been heating our plastic. We've set the griddle at 225 degrees. It'll take some experimenting to see how light, how hot you like your griddle. You can verify the temperature anywhere from 215 to 300 degrees depending on the way your rheostat works. To pour your bait, we want to put a low steady stream of plastic into the mold. We're going to try and pour a little bit of a hump on the bait because plastic will contract as it cools. Fill your mold, allowing the plastic to flow where it needs to flow. Slow, steady stream. We'll allow our mold to cool and turn the griddle off, allowing the plastisol to go back into its solid state. It's been about five or six minutes since we've removed the mold from the griddle. We poured two just to show you several examples. This mold, we didn't quite fill it to the top, so we have a little bit more of a cavity depression. You can use this to hide the hook and create like a weedless hook slot. But we also have a couple of overpours. To remove the old pores, we just simply grab and pull. Do not try and remove the bait and fix these as you work. They come off rather easily. Now we're ready for the bait removal. Grab it by the tip and pull your bait out. You have your own made bait in the comfort of your home, and you are now a bait maker. It's going to be a little sticky. You can take the back side and trim it to your liking depending on what type of action you desire. You can keep the tab full or you can trim it off and have a true split tail. This is the five inch jerk bait. It will catch fish. You will put that on a hook and you'll be glad you did. This one has a little bit of overage down here. Simply just do the same thing and pull it off. You can see as it removes, it's rather simple. Clean up is not hard. We poured a great bait here. We had a slight hump, so the cavity depression is much less and we have another beautiful bait. I'm Gary from Angling AI and I want to thank you for joining us in our Beginning Bait Makers Kit How To video. Please take a look at our other two Beginning Bait Makers Kits, the 3.5 inch craw, which comes with a green pumpkin and black and blue, and our 7.5 inch ribbon tail worm, which comes with black and blue and dark melon. Before long, you'll be a master at hand pouring your baits, having a ton of fun on the water, and we hope you enjoy our kits. Make your baits your way and go put that on a hook.